Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was asked to do something that they love. <laughs> my neighborhood. It was the greatest neighborhood in the city. Barring that. And St. Mary's Parish, before the war, was considered the biggest falling precinct in the state of Montana. I say that just to give you an idea of the impact of people that we had out there. Fort John was ordered on the west by Main Street, east side of Main Street, across the street was <laughs> South of the contract, north of Copper Street, over to the Anaconda Road, and then in behind the road, up to the Agate Street Bridge, we used to call it, going into the store right north of there. The other side was Dublin Gulch. And then north of the contracts and center road. And they were all fine lines. I, I mean that sincerely. They were very fine lines. I can remember when Nick Parker moved up out of the gulch up to center road and married Stella. They were going to ostracize him because he left the John was kind of a dividing point between Centerville and the Gulch and the football teams. And the, the streetcar used to come up the Anaconda Road and then swung and went under the Stewart line there and then around the site. If they beat the Gulch, we'd be down there with rocks. They'd be <laughs> on the open car. <laughs> they'd, all, they'd wear their uniforms back into Centerville because of the rock. I brought two pictures up here tonight. One is a tank. Uh, my dad took a picture of my sister and her friend, and the tank was in the background. And everybody thought that was a BAP tank. It wasn't. It was in it. It belonged to the NP. Now, the NP ran around to the Alice Mine. And they would never sign up with the BAP because Daly built the BAP. And the Walker brothers felt daily double crossed them when he went to the Anaconda. So they'd never sign up with the BAP. We were two blocks, I worked for the BAP, we were two blocks from the Alice Mine, and the NP had to go over eight miles to get in there below the order. That was how bitter that thing. But under that tank, there's three members of the overall gang, or tank gang, they call them all. And the reason they hung out there was in Silver Bow County. The sheriff was elected. The chief of police was appointed. And all of them were Irish kids in that gang. They come from big families. So the sheriff kind of left them along. That's why they hung out there. It was in the county. And they hung out there. They were pilfering coal off the Anaconda Company, the Northwest Coal Yard, the Monaghan Coal Yard. 16 cars, railroad cars of coal went into Corktown every night. Now if you can imagine that. That was heating all the mines, the steam lines that you've seen running around through the mines, that heated all of that steam. And it also ran the hoist for most of the mines. So they, there was a big demand for coal on the hill. And when we hit, speaking we, when the railroad hit the Anselmo, those curves in through there, it slowed the trains down, and the kids would get on, and they'd sit on the, the gondolas of coal and kick it off with their feet, and the rest of them would be behind them picking them up. And then same thing up in the yard. We have a, they had a store in the yard up there, and they'd go down and get all the coal they could, and that's how they heated the house. They got their wood out of, out of the mines and the coal. So the tank gang, or overall gang, stole coal. And they sold it. Now that's another story about the gang. They were, and we felt very comfortable around them. None of us feared anybody from the overall gang or the tank gang. We always felt comfortable. We hung out on the end of the fence, my, my father's fence, and they had a bonfire. There was two gentlemen in there that had their legs off. One they called Peg Leg Sullivan and the other one they called Ham Bone Dunn. <laughs> in Christmas time, Christmas time they take their crutches and limbs away from them and put 
stood down in the street corner selling pencils. And the gang had come along and kicked the porters out of their hats <laughs> and they'd give them more pencils and they'd buy moonshine. And, of course, they drank a lot of moonshine. <laughs> and Malone Dunn was a real character and he was an honorary bucker. He was an honor. It was always said that he got the house for his mother and his sisters outside the con gate because he lost the leg in the con. And when he'd come off a drunk gate, sisters had sent him up to McCarthy's barber shop and bathhouse up in Centerville <coughs> and get a bath and a haircut and a shave in that order. Well, McCarthy didn't want much to do with him because he was on me. He had the stone <coughs> cutting his hair and shaving him. While he was shaving him, he cut him with the razor. He was wiping the blood off it down and he he could tell he was upset, and he said to him, to break the tension, he said, Did I ever cut your hair before, Mr. Dunn? He said, No, goddamn you, I lost this leg in the mountain climb. <laughs> <laughs> created the 
Pierce County Brigade and he created the parade with the Hibernians. 